In today's presentation, we're examining the pediatric assessment triangle and how it can help you with your initial assessment of pediatric patients. So what are we talking about when we look at the pediatric assessment triangle? First of all, it's an easy tool you can use in your initial assessment before you even get to the patient. It's totally non-invasive. You don't actually even have to touch the patient while using the pediatric assessment triangle. And that's one of the things that makes it so valuable for assessing kids, especially those very young patients who have a lot of stranger anxiety as part of their normal development. It's non-threatening because you can do it from across the room, from a distance, without even approaching the patient. And best of all, it's quick and easy. The pediatric assessment triangle is based on three variables to determine whether you have a sick or not sick patient. And by sick or not sick, we really mean critical or not critical. Is this a patient that you can stay and play with or is this somebody you're gonna load and run to the hospital with? In pediatric assessment, we call it sick or not sick. And the three variables that we're gonna look at are appearance, work of breathing, and circulation to skin. These are the three things you can actually assess very easily without even getting too close to the patient and before you start using your stethoscope and going hands-on with patient injuries and looking at the patient's condition. So first, let's look at appearance. Appearance uses the acronym TICLS, T-I-C-L-S, and TICLS refers to tone, irritability, consolability, look or gaze, and speech or cry. And these are things you can look at from across the room. First, let's look at tone. Does the kid have abnormal muscle tone? Are they limp or rigid, or is their muscle tone totally absent? If they're normal, they'll have good muscle tone. They'll be moving their extremities, and infants will strongly resist any attempt to straighten out their limbs. An assessment of irritability is next. If their crying is absent or abnormal, or the child cannot be stimulated to cry, this is an abnormal sign. In addition to indicating an altered mental status, this may also be a sign of an occluded airway. A normal child will have a strong, normal cry. And this is a reliable sign of a clear airway. Moving on to C for consolability. A child that's abnormal just can't be consoled or comforted by normal caregivers, and they don't respond normally to environmental stimulus like toys. Normal kids are able to be consoled by adults, mom or dad, and they respond in their usual way to toys and the environment. You want to examine their look. If they have a vacant stare with a lack of eye contact, the kid may not seem to recognize normal caregivers and won't pay any attention to you. A normal child will be able to make eye contact. And then speech or cry. A sick child is unable to express himself or herself age appropriately. Speech or crying for babies is absent or abnormal. With a lack of crying in infants, again, this may be a sign of an occluded airway. The next step is work of breathing, and this is a measure of respiratory effort and visible signs of respiratory distress. A normal score for work of breathing should show you that the child's breathing is noiseless, effortless, and painless. They shouldn't be trying harder than normal to breathe. An abnormal score on work of breathing shows that the child is exhibiting an abnormal respiratory effort that may be increased, indicating that the child's working harder than normal to breathe, decreased, or absent. Some signs of increased work of breathing include noisy breathing, grunting in infants, retractions, use of accessory muscles, nasal flaring, or seesaw breathing in infants where the chest and abdomen seesaw up and down. This is a sign of severe respiratory distress in an infant. And the final piece of the pediatric assessment triangle is circulation to skin. We examine this by looking at skin color and looking for obvious bleeding. Circulation to skin is measured by the skin color and capillary refill, and it's an excellent indicator of perfusion in children. A child with normal circulation will have his or her normal skin color. There'll be no obvious bleeding, but abnormal circulation to the skin may be indicated by pallor, generally an early sign of decreased circulation, cyanosis, mottling, and obvious blood loss. When we score the pediatric assessment triangle, we don't assign a numerical score. We're looking for abnormal signs. The pediatric assessment triangle can be used by all levels of EMS providers as a method of quickly determining the acuity of a child. Once you've used the pediatric assessment triangle to determine how critical your patient is, you should use your results to help guide your decisions. It can influence decisions like additional resources or speeding up your patient transport. Remember, always do a hands-on assessment after using the pediatric assessment triangle to form an impression of whether the patient is stable, in shock, 
respiratory failure, or respiratory distress. The Pediatric Assessment Triangle is a great tool, but it's just the first step in patient care. Thank you.